This is Cat for Luke TV. We're in Brighton catching up with Chris Cowie, who's um, recently re-emerged back onto the scene with the relaunch of your two labels, uh, and that's Bellboy and Hook. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yourself? I'm really very well, thank you. Let's talk about the Hook Bellboy thing, because they do have a slightly different sound. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they've both very much got a signature sound, and you've got one that's more, and I hate to use the words easy listening, but which is a, a sort of more accessible, shall we say. Yeah, the Hook label. And is, and is, was that a deliberate sort of effort, or conscious uh, effort on your part and a commercial decision? No, it was because... Um, I've always liked uh, the original trance stuff. If, if you go back to the trance, this is before Goa and anything like that, it was actually quite credible. It wasn't like this epic trance that we get now, where every track has like a big four minute breakdown, you know? And, and really, every track does have that, you know? And uh, that's just too much. How can a DJ play a set where every track has got these like huge breakdowns? So what made Hook actually quite influential in the trance scene was we were we were kind of we were kind of different from the other trance labels, and I kind of took a hint that it was a, like a cross between IQ and Detroit techno. That's all I did with Hook. It wasn't it wasn't like I'm going to do a trance label because I just liked some melody as well, you know. As for the Bellboy label, that was much more of a not strict, but tech house, techno. It much more sort of yeah. minimalist sound yeah. and, the, and the sort of funk, funky side of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And I've always been influenced by uh, uh, Detroit techno, the LA stuff. Not what the guys are doing now. I'm afraid it's not so great these days, but I'm talking about the, the really LA stuff like Red Planet, Underground Resistance. All that stuff was, I mean, it's the darkness. You're being chased. That's where that music comes from, you know? We were talking because you've got a new release, which, is, or you've been working with a singer called Rye. Yeah. But, and that's more a sort of synthy pop track. Yeah. Now, we were, you were saying you've taken the decision that that's not a hook or bellboy release. Yeah. And that, that fit, you feel that needs to go somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I've always wanted to do, I mean, I've made a lot of records, um, instrumentals. And, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm bored of doing that, but I always wanted to make, you know, since since I was 14, you know, when I started playing guitar, I wanted, you know, and then I started playing in, like, bands, real bands, playing guitar and all that. So I kind of missed that kind of interaction with vocals. And the decision to work with Rai, uh, she flew over from Detroit to Aberdeen, lived uh, with, uh, in Aberdeen for five months, the poor girl. And, um, you know, uh, and we spent five months making this album, and it should have been finished by now, but because I, I also have to do a lot of other things, uh, I'm just about, just it'll be finished within the next couple of months, but it won't be going on to Bellboy or Hook, because quite, the reality is, my labels are not big enough to take that album, it'll sink, you know, without a trace. And it's too damn good to let that happen, basically. So I'm not saying it needs a, a major, uh, but I think a, a reasonably sized indie that can put a bit of, something behind it. A couple of years ago, there was a Loop Masters pack. You did a sample pack for Loop Masters, and yeah. we're about to get your second one. What's different? Um, Don't say nothing. That, no, that there will be some different things in it. I, I, learned, I learned a few things with the, the first one, because obviously I'd never done one before, and um, it, it was quite an interesting experience, actually. But obviously, that was a couple of years ago now since I, I did that one. I was actually supposed to have one done, another second one in the first year, but, you know, I'm an artist. These things take time. I have to think about them for a year before I actually do them. But the second one will be a little bit more eclectic, a little bit different, and uh, one thing that I, I'm going to be putting in this one is real hi-hat loops. You know, like real drummer hi-hat loops. Um, I've looked around for those. I know that there's some out there, but I, I think there's a little shortage of that. Because I think putting a real hi-hat in among your dance track, your, your machinery, basically, uh, just gives it a little bit of live, a little bit of feel. 
um, and I'll probably put in some MIDI files this time, you know, so that, that people can change the chords around and what have you. I'll make up chord structures probably, and uh, and I'll, I'll include the MIDI files as well. I mean, the nice thing is, is people buy the packs understanding that they're going to get that little bit of your signature sound, and it allows them that as a, as a sort of inspiration and a base yeah, to work yeah, off. Yeah. And so that's certainly no bad thing, but... Well, that's how I use loops, yeah. I mean, I won't... I, I'm, you know, you'll, you'll actually still get quite a lot of musicians will go, oh, I'll never use a loop. I'll never. Well, I don't care. I mean, I'll happily use a loop if it fits the track, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I've got obviously got quite a few of the Loop Masters uh, loop packs, and I'm using loads of them, you know? But what I will often do, just say I'll take a, a, a bass line loop, I, I maybe, you know, I might like the sound, so I'll maybe just nick the sound, you know, take a little bit of the sound and then put it in a sample and make my own bass line. So but there, there's so many uses. It, just because it's a loop, it doesn't mean to say you're restrained to just using that loop and with Rex files and all, all that, you can chop bits out of drum machines. That's how I tend to use them. But I also find them inspiring. It's like having a, uh, you know, because I write alone and it's like having a, a, you know, another partner there. You know, just bring out a loop. Oh, I wouldn't have thought on that, you know? And it can often lead on to, you know, change in the direction of a track, you know? And in fact, this synth pop album, the, the one I did with Rai, the Loop Masters loops were in use, heavy use, just to get the ideas, and I would often replace them, you know, with my own parts, but quite a few of them have stuck in there. Some of the guitar parts and all that, yeah. Loop Masters are actually a fantastic lot, and they're great value for money. <laughs> <laughs>